I will now invite the team of summer interns and some of my staff members who have been working with the EDX platform. You are all familiar with the Moodle, at least as users. So let me tell you what Moodle groups are and why they are important. It is also important in the context of the EDX customization that we are doing after my colleagues explained to you. The Moodle groups are relevant because when we conduct the 10,000 teachers training program, these 10,000 teachers will assemble at 277 remote centers, as I said. Each one of you will be associated with 50, 60, 70 participants. On the course Moodle, there will be groups made. All of you will be automatically registered on the new Moodle for the main workshop, but you will be designated as non-editing teachers in the Moodle. And for each non-editing teacher, there will be a set of 50, 70 participants who register at your place. This will ensure that when you log into that Moodle, as non-editing teachers, you will be able to see the submissions by all those 50 or 70 participants which belong to your group. And to give you a glimpse of that, we will be forming groups here. For individual groups, there will not be non-editing teachers. I and Firuza and Nagesh and others will continue to be common teachers. But at least the group will be visible to you. So when you log in, you will be able to see the activities of your group colleagues and so on. Each group typically should have a coordinator. So please ensure that today when you go to the lab, the first thing that you do is decide on one of your group members to be the coordinator. In the uh, sheet that I will circulate, where you will write, there will be group portions where you will write your, uh, what you call RC ID code and name. The name is essential so that if there is a mistake in RC ID code, either by your, while you are writing or while our entering, it could be checked because the name will be there for the parts. So name of the participant and RC code. And the coordinator, whosoever is the coordinator, should be marked with a star. So that we know who is the coordinator for that. What we will do is tentatively we will designate that coordinator as a non-editing teacher. With a dual role. Just as a coordinator. And the group submissions on the Moodle over the next two days will have to be made by that coordinator from that coordinator side. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to hand over uh, uh, to my colleagues here, uh, Virunda and Charu. Uh, they, they are going to show you the glimpse of uh, EDX platform, which is going to be used for MOOCs. Please remember that this is the platform which we might use either jointly with Moodle, or instead of Moodle, we might use this platform as modified later. So the first presentation is on the EDX features. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, here we are going to present functionalities of EDX. First, we will see the functionalities of instructor side. Instructor, uh, initially, instructor has to create an account. And once uh, their account is verified, then they have to create a course, and they can add a course team member. <coughs> by giving them privilege of admin or staff. Uh, just one second. Uh, what she is describing is an interface to create a course. So obviously this job is done by a teacher and a group of team members of that teacher. So for example, the CS 101 programming course would be created by me and some of my colleagues who will be called the teacher and the staff member team for that course. Yeah. Yes. Next is, uh, we can structure the course by using sections, subsections, and units. And in the units, there are different kinds of components. See, you can see, first is section, the second is subsection, and the third one is units. Next. Units have four different components. One is discussion where admin and TAs can actively participate uh, in the discussion. The second one is HTML, which is used to create the content of the course. The third one is you can create 
different types of quizzes by using the third problem component and the fourth one video component here we can upload a video lecture by using uh, youtube or third party site along with the transcripts in this uh, in this part required files like pdf image or documents can be uploaded uh, which are required in the course except video uh, i want to tell you one thing uh, for evaluating the assignments there are three kinds of assessments in adx the one is uh self assessment peer assessment and ai assessment now we will see student that is lear uh, learning management system first student has to create an account and once uh, his account uh, has been created then he can uh, go for uh, available courses where where we can register and it will appear in the dashboard the course info shows announcements and course updates of the courses second one is the courseware where uh, sections subsections and units are appeared uh, uh, according to the instructor side here we can see the different quiz problems where uh, like drop down check box and different kinds of problems are there we can uh, instructor can create these problems and it will look like uh, this like you can see in the, the drop down problem in uh, discussion in discussion component tas can upload for the good discussion and in the last uh, students can see their own progress that's it thank you so you'll notice that the edx platform looks significantly different from model please remember that model is a learning management system only whereas edx is a complete course delivery platform so edx has its own learning management system but being a course delivery platform it permits people to define a sequence of activities so as you saw the components and the sections and subsections that hierarchy automatically defines a sequence so if there is a student who is doing a course on edx platform the student will see the complete sequence there is very much like the weekly schedule and all that will appear but it is not just a schedule i will also be guided to first watch a particular lecture then do some activities like solving some problems or looking at some sample problems then i will be guided to go to a quiz after attempting the quiz i'll be guided to the next lecture what we are also trying to ensure and this is a global effort in fact that if i make lots of mistakes in answering some of my quizzes then the back end system will feature an additional input to me individually saying mr fatak you don't seem to have understood this this concept well so this is an additional material that you should read many of you will relate this to intelligent tutoring system or personalized tutoring systems for which the research has been ongoing for more than two decades but that is not yet uh, defined fully for functionality nor the software has been developed for it currently it's a moocs platform now having said this this is the platform being open source platform we are modifying it for adoption in the blended model as i mentioned in india what it means is that some of your students will be working on the edx platform for the courses that are offered but when they are registered for the courses they would be mentored by you in their respective colleges in the flip classroom mode their exams will be supervised by you etc etc what it means is that the edx platform which currently on one end is visible to all the students who register for the course and on the other end it is exposed to the teachers of the course in let's say iit bombay or mit or something it now needs to be exposed to a large number of local teachers who would be mentored for those local students how to do that is a challenging task because the original edx platform does not have anything like that in specification there is no notion of groups for example if there are 1 lakh learners from all over the world who are registered for a course all 1 lakh form a group if at all and all 1 lakh are individuals 
so each individual person gives quizzes etc etc where the grades are individualistic and the grades are not related to either a university or a college so the team which is now going to demonstrate to you is going to demonstrate this distributed platform there are many functions that need to be added to that platform what they will describe is how a platform that will exist in iit bombay a copy of that platform will exist in every sister institution where the students are registered for this course and how exactly the different functionalities would be provided and utilized good afternoon everyone uh, as uh, uh, in the previous presentation charu presented the original edx platform uh, but using that original platform in indian environment has some shortcomings like millions of uh, people register on students register on that platform but they are very low completion rate because uh, participating in the edx courses with the university courses uh, they don't have that much time to uh, handle both the courses secondly there are no practical sessions and no direct interaction with the teacher so we are presenting a um, blended mooc model which is the iit bombay initiative to use the open edx we are modifying the open edx to adapt the blended mooc model and offer courses like in india but in the blended mooc model there is also some problems with the like in india there are like various institutes will participate in that blended mooc model but we need a high capacity internet bandwidth in that but also to resolve that problem we are implementing it as a distribute model like in every college there would be a local server implemented and that local server would remain in sync with the main server at iit bombay so our proposed mo uh, model has some modules like first of all the identification of central roles will be done like who will uh, create the co uh, course and who will be the instructor who wants to uh, deliver the courses after that the remote centers and institutes would be recognized like who wants to participate in the iit bombay x after that uh, the training of that remote center coordinators would be done and we are currently in that phase only so as the training would Uh, complete there would be modules to register the institute and after that the institute get registered he will set up the complete server on their local machines also on the local uh, on the location and on local servers after that the student will come to iit bombay x and registers and would take courses we are also working on assessments like in original edx we have assessments of peer evaluation ai grading and self grading but here we are using peer evaluation uh self grading but we are replacing the ai grading with the staff grading because in ai grading there are some shortcomings we are never sure that the ai grading while uh, working on a long text and grading that we are sure that it will give us accurate answers so in our system when in uh, like a uh, 40 or 50 students belongs to an institute would be headed by only one faculty so a faculty can easily uh, check their answers so we can then de this using staff grading and after that on the successful compl uh, completion of the courses the student will receive the iit bombay x certificate this is the glimpse of the front page of the system we are developing we have uh, how it works iit bombay x members student registration and institute registration so there are some procedure or a flow of the system how it will go on like first of all the courses will be announced simultaneously institute will become the member of iit bombay x and after that a student will attend the iit bombay x courses and the final step would be data would be synchronized simultaneously like if a student is taking the course how his behavior and his registration details would synchronize among all the servers so first how to become an iit bombay x member so institute a institute coordinator would come to the iit bombay x main server and would register himself as a institute over there and after that he will set up his server on the, his local location and he will also get the uh, the student who will register on the institute server he will also get the details of that student and he has to approve that student that the student belong to that institute or not and after that the institute will successfully host the courses another thing is the how to become an iit bombay x student so student come on the iit bombay x server registers here and after being approved he is redirected to his local institute server so here he on the local institute server he can log in with the same details and he can take the courses which the institute has enrolled for so and 
in that case he would be learning from one of the best faculty and he can also interact with the staff and his fellow members using discussion forums and also there we are encour encouraging staff grading and all these things so he has a local faculty as their supervisor so in, in, in all we are uh, we are in, uh, encouraging the participation of human in this uh, blended MOOC model and on successful com uh, completion he will receive the grade and another major feature of his data synchronization like when the student registers on the main server his only uh, the specific data will synchronize to that local server like if a student belongs to institute 1 his data will be synchronized to institute 1 only and when the student is taking the course on the local server and, and uh, he is whatever his grades or performance that grades and performance would be uh, uh, simultaneously synchronized to the main server so after that uh, there are some other roles also uh, like we are using some existing roles like site supervisor who is the admin there is course faculty who will create the uh, uh, courses at iit bombay and other central coordinator who will manage the complete system at iit bombay and after that there would be local coordinator remote center coordinator which we are in the current phase and there would be central course assistant who will help the course creator to uh, like a ta in the course creator who will manage the courses and the local faculty who will uh, who will train the students also solve their doubts and ha will help in staff grading and local administrator who will set up the servers over there and handle the technical problems and uh, as the students in the last thank you now i would like you to appreciate the possible expansion of use of both this approach and this facility Consider the following. There is a group of institutions in a city. Okay. Let's say four or five institutions where either it's an autonomous university kind of thing where all the four or five colleges follow exactly the same course and the course has to be taught. There is no reason why the faculty members of these five institutions can come, not come together. Define a course, XXX 101 for whatever subject. And they run that course entirely using this model, where one of those five institutions become the hub institution. So there is nothing peculiar about IIT Bombay X. IIT Bombay X could be any X institution. And those five institutions can be member institutions whose students will work on this model. So these five institutions could have a local server, and the main hub institution could have the main server, and you can run exactly the same model with the local teachers constructing this course. A university, let's say Vishwishwara Technical University, might decide to offer such blended books to all 200 colleges for some subjects. Vishwishwara Technical University in Belgaum then can locate the main hub server where the courses created by them would then be offered to all the students in blended mode. It is possible, suppose I am an institute X, I might want to my students to take a blended MOOCs course offered by the university to which I am affiliated, although I am an autonomous college. Another course from IIT Bombay, a third course from IIT Kharagpur, and a fourth course which is run by my local teachers, but because the students are more, I might want to create different sections, each of which I want to treat as a separate institution. The possibilities are enormous. The description that I just gave you means that the modification that we have to do to the best platform are very significant. They are not limited to eventually run only one blended model from one institution. That is not the objective. However, you will agree that such expanded feature set will take at least two years to develop with a large team. I am proposing to the government of India and I think the, the MHRD is keen, we'll know within about two months' time, either through TechEP or some other things, we will get additional support to develop this entire software over the next two years and make the entire thing available to every institution to be used in whichever way you want. The objective of this uh, brief description is twofold. Number one, I would like all of you to go back 
read more about edx platform while this platform is not released and there is no separate documentation edx is already there and it is not difficult to understand how edx functions in its core all that you need to do is simply pick up a course of your choice on the edx platform register for it and make sure that the course is free by the way so that you don't spend any money and go through as if you are a student in that course and see exactly how the established edx platform works then start thinking yourself on how such adoption in different forms can benefit the students of your institution and try to write down the additional functions that must be provided for the student for the local teachers and for others and please communicate that with us i will soon be setting up a separate moodle merely for this discussion forums and such things on the edx platform starting uh, uh, the may 10th may 10th is when the interns are coming uh, we are getting a large number of interns as you know many of your institutions in fact uh, would have students who will be coming to iit bombay as interns yesterday i was talking to prof avinash aute uh, uh, he just mentioned that once again the largest number of students are likely to come from uh, one institute called vnit nagpur is there somebody from vnit here yeah so th last year also there were too many i asked them to curtail that number but for some reason the number of students who apply for internship from vnit is roughly three times more than any other institute so any filtering that we do many still manage to guess in which is good news anyway there are going to be about 160 interns who will be working on different projects these have been selected out of 3200 applicants now a significant chunk of these interns will be working with the edx mooc teams to make those modifications these students many of them will come from some of your institutions will be told to go back and coordinate similar activities in the form of either final year projects or something like that to continue to contribute to open source so in addition if any other institution which is an rc with iit bombay and therefore is closely connected with us wishes to participate in this kind of joint development you are most welcome to make suggestions at the end of this summer when we would have a greater clarity on what more features we want to add we'll put up the list of features and we'll request the sister institutions like you to try and participate in contributing to the open source work i hope you like this idea and approach yes. very good sir if edx actually edx is more effective one then hmm. what is the major purpose of the spoken tutorial okay i'll i'll tell you first of all the two things are completely different the it is almost like saying that if car is quite effective what is the need for a bullock cart or what is the need for a plane although all of them are transport devices the objective of transport is different for example spoken tutorials are stand alone low payload quantums which can be easily used by many people individually for targeted activities spoken tutorials are targeted towards self learning whereas the edx platform is targeted towards online group learning that is a fundamental difference so these two are different however the way these two are remotely connected with each other is in the following fashion we are adopting the spoken tutorial methodology to create some of our video lectures so to that extent that methodology is useful to us but the objectives of these two are different sir uh, when we have to install a edx in our institute that time we have to register a institute so registration will be done by the rc coordinator or workshop coordinator okay you don't have to register yourself to install the edx first of all if you just want to experiment as of today edx is open source they open sourced it in last june okay. so it is an open source software which is available on github okay. without talking to either edx or to iit bombay 
like any other citizen in the world, you can download that and install it as it is. Second, the modified platform will also be released in open source. So if you just are interested in using that platform, you don't have to register with anybody. You can download it, install it and start using it for your purposes. The registration comes into effect only if the students of your institution and your institution is willing to benefit from this partnership where a blended MOOCs course is being offered by IIT Bombay. So if you are interested that your students should register for the course offered by IIT Bombay in the blended mode, then you register on the blended MOOCs platform here, then your students register and then they start doing that course. That's it. Sir, in that uh, complete process, there is a no role for a registration, in, uh, uh, no role of a coordinator in a registration. In, in Student that, will directly register. In that whole process, there is no role for workshop coordinator, no role for remote center coordinator, hmm. because then the institution will be coming forward as a partner institution in the blended MOOCs offering. The relationship will be between the institution and institution and will the relationship will be limited to offering of that particular course. The purpose of remote center, workshop coordinators, etc. is to execute the T10KT workshop program to train teachers. That is for training students directly, jointly with the help of local teachers. So there will be a separate uh, infrastructure it is not a funded project. It, in fact, it will cost money and we still are not sure how to recover the cost. As I mentioned, we are toying with the idea of putting the cost somewhere between 400 to 600 rupees per participant per course. And it is still not clear. For example, suppose I am an autonomous institute in Jarsuguda and somebody says, okay, your students will benefit from IIT Bombay's thermodynamics course. I would like my students to learn thermodynamics from Professor Gaitonde. But when I ask my students, please pay 500 rupees more for this course, the students will say, Sir, I have paid you my tuition fee. Why should I pay 500 rupees more? IIT Bombay will say, this is my cost. Since you have collected the tuition fee from the students, the college should pay me this amount. Legitimate? from an IIT Bombay's point of view. The college management will say, I could have paid if you had done this course directly with students without involving my institution. But you are asking my teachers to participate. In fact, you are asking my teachers to do more work than what they were doing earlier. You are using my college infrastructure. So the fees that I collect from my students is meant for that purpose. How will I pay? I'm glad this question was asked, but do you realize the complexity of the situation? In this model, the, in any model of education, there is an expenditure. That expenditure is to be recovered for, from the revenue that an institution generates. The revenue will come either from government grants or from the tu tuition fee paid by the students. There is no other third model. Now, the blended, the MOOCs courses reduce the cost if complete thing is online. The blended MOOCs involve everybody has to work hard in exactly the same way. Where will this extra revenue come from? In fact, I would like some of you to comment on this. Would it be possible, for example, that the autonomous institutions which partner with us will be able to charge 300 to 500 rupees per student for a subject that they study in this fashion? The only advantage is they will probably get a better uh, level of education than what they would otherwise get from the normal university exam style. What is your, uh, for example, I will throw some three numbers to you. 300 rupees per course, 1000 rupees per course and 3000 rupees per course. After what do you think would be normally the students will be more than willing to pay for the so-called better quality education. Thousand rupees will be comfortable and students will be willing to pay. We are talking about per course. Per course means there are two or three courses in one semester. 
okay so what he is saying is that it is unlikely that over the next 5 years more than one or two courses per semester in this fashion can be taught and therefore students may not find it difficult okay any other opinion on the amount of money yeah so, sir like this 10k program that iit madras that professor junjunwala is also heading a project called q triple e sir around 100 institutes already they are member and they are already set up that server and other things like this uh, additional uh, additional effort is not required to set up servers and other things for okay. and so that we can reuse that setup and so that uh, we can reduce some cost i think that will uh, uh, first of all let me tell you he is referring to a q triple e by the way i am very much a member of that committee i have participated in all deliberations there is still a cost for example IIT Madras has set up a huge infrastructure. Who has paid for that cost? Today, government has paid for that cost. The point is, these models, if they have to sustain over next 20, 30, 40 years, they cannot depend on government funding. If IIT Bombay makes this uh, infrastructure and continues to support its running, I will require a 10 to 15 crore major server facility here. I will have to set up a team of 100 professional programmers who will work continuously to ensure that end-to-end -end system works. Who will pay for them? The government will pay initial seed grant. Will the government pay for next 10 years for all of this? It will not. So please understand that the technology has cost. The costs become low per participant if the number of participants are large. That is the advantage of the MOOCs economy. But there is a non-trivial, non-zero cost. Now, here is my answer to the question that I raised. By the way, the American companies which are now starting to charge for, in the guise of this certification or that certification, the charges are typically $50, $100 per course. $100 is about 6,000 rupees, $50 is about 3,000 rupees. I have time and again argued with these firangs that the economic models sustainable in different societies are different. In India, students, parents and the teachers and the colleges earn in rupees, not in dollars. So 3,000 and 6,000 rupees is not tenable. What you are saying, 1,000 rupees is tenable, but 1,000 rupees will become tenable only if consistently we show that the students benefit from this course more than what they were benefiting on. The chicken and egg story is how to kickstart this activity. The reason I have suggested 500 rupees is firstly, the examination fees which the university charges Many of you will have affiliated status for the affiliation universities. You all agree that there is a fees that you pay per participant, per student, to the university for the conduct of examination. Now, I have read many clauses. By the way, the university examination fees differ widely across the country, number one. Secondly, a total examination fees for all the papers that the student appears is not very large. But whenever there is only one paper for which the student has to be examined, the fees is typically 300 to 400 rupees. This is the reason why I have suggested 300 to 500 rupees as an not reasonability is not the only issue, but acceptability is another issue. And my letter to the universities will say that these 500 rupees can be considered to be equivalent to the examination fees that the student usually pays to the university, except that for this examination fees, the student shall not pay anything to the university. Instead, it will pay to IIT Bombay X or whatever X it is. That is my model. In any case, in the first year when we offer this, it will be a pilot offering and that offering will be made free because the cost of that initial investment in the infrastructure, etc., is being done through government fund. But we cannot sustain it in 2015, 2016, 2017. So that is the, that is the objective of the asking this question. <coughs>
so do you or can can i can i just get a sort of a quick poll saying 500 rupees per course would be a reasonable and acceptable figure yes sir yes, yes. yeah okay please sir yes. as you said uh, the methodology that you are going to use uh, will really benefit to the students i would suggest that uh, please uh, have a long term relationship with the institutes settle it in uh, beforehand before the admission process starts for the students and uh, decide uh, about the fees per student with the institute and let the students know about the uh, the courses that you are offering through iit uh, within the admission brochure that they are going to uh, see before when the is the admission brochure released typically uh, in may somewhere and okay. okay so if in the first fortnight of may we are able to establish the relationship with those autonomous institution and deemed universities which are going to partner with us and if we announce those names that would be good yes sir fine thank you very much for this input so these are mooc courses offered by iit bombay hmm. are they same as the courses which we are uh, Uh, offering in our institutes for example computer programming it is taught for all the students common to all engineering students yes. so if iit bombay offers this course oh. then we need not teach that course at our institute that's the whole idea yes that's the whole idea instead your teachers will be partnering with iit bombay teachers in offering that blended mode training there that's the whole idea so, yes. so that we can make all our 300 students correct correct, uh, correct. go for this MOOC. absolutely hmm. absolutely talk okay. thank you very good afternoon to you sir i am dr nalli priya from uh, savita engineering college uh, my suggestion is see during the uh, first year admission we can take certain uh, subjects in the mooch model and the last uh, final year uh, students must do the project mm. so in that uh, we can implement these kind of uh, activities like edx kind of activities because uh, it's a very uh, nice thing uh, you can interact with uh, so yeah, even we can get um, suggestions from iit bombay for projects and all it would be very difficult to interrelate and work at the level of group projects in every institution okay. because every group project is different whereas when we teach a course there is a single course which is learned by everybody so that is the difference the project level interaction through moocs would be extremely difficult we can use instead the avu kind of mechanisms for interrelationship another suggestion which we have made to the government and that will come uh, through techip but it will be made available to all non techip institutions also eventually is to set up discussion forums more than the btech final year project we are concerned about mtech projects and phd projects where many of our colleague teachers in the institutions are themselves interested in yes. so we are trying to set up research discussion forums where on a specific topic there may be only one or two faculty members in an institute working on that topic or that area but across the country there are 1000 people now there is no mechanism to bring these 1000 people together on a forum they cannot physically travel for interaction every now and then so we'll be setting up the forum through avu and we propose to utilize the rc infrastructure that we are setting up for t10kt to be used on saturday sundays in the normal semester for such research forum yes yeah. and now uh, one more thing uh, so during 7th uh, semester and 8th semester all our students will uh, select elective papers yes. so um, it is uh, i am suggesting that uh, they can take subjects which is run by eds and all uh, okay. it it uh, let me tell you practically it will not be possible to extend the blended moocs model offering to anything other than basic courses okay they uh, apart from all other reasons there is an economic reason this 300 500 rupees per course is a sustainable model if there are lakhs of students electives what, means sir. lakhs of students across the country registering for that course then only it is sustainable not otherwise okay that's if there are I'm only 10000 students across the country working on this model then the cost effectiveness of this model will not be there no, 
they have to select any of the elective models sir so uh, the the university will suggest also, this also, course also 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 there is another thing your desire must be matched by some faculty member in iit bombay who is willing to do the godagiri of preparing that course and offering it okay <laughs> it is not easy to do that so we'll we'll see how it evolves we'll see how it evolves thank you sir yeah okay yeah. sir we have already the mooc courses for coursera udacity uh, edx so how we convince our students to take this course because in that courses they did not have to pay anything they can able to see the video they can yes. able to give the exams yeah, yeah. Uh, please understand the difference when i do a course in edx itself why coursera edx also offers courses i can do a course in edx coursera etc etc but when i do that course i am still required to do my regular course in my institution in my university that course is not a substitute for my regular course this blended model course is a substitute for my regular course that is the difference the in short the certificate that you get from coursera or even from edx is an honor course certificate which the world does not value but the certificate that the student will obtain will be a dual certificate it will be a certificate from iit bombay x and it will be a certificate from the university where the grade is accepted that That's grade good. will show on his grade report and that fact that i have done a course from your institution but from iit bombay x will appear in my certificate now if that is not valued that is fair no issue if right. the certificate is there then it's very good sir yeah Uh, do you have any initiation towards this uh, so that the university authorities will accept this uh, MOOCs courses and all, or uh, do we get any guidance from UGC or uh, from this IIT side, IIT Bombay side? If you are a university, you don't need any guidance. Indian universities are autonomous to take their decision. Each university has to do the following: they should examine any course offered, whether it is IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, or whatever. Anybody who says we offer this course and your university should take the grade. what suppose i am that university what i will have to do i have to see this is the syllabus of iit bombay course this is the corresponding syllabus of a similar course that i am offering in my university now if i take that course instead of this then my students should learn roughly what they were learning from this course because iit bombay is not going to change their syllabus so my university or my autonomous institution has to establish an equivalence except that equivalence then accept the fact that my students will be studying this course in the blended moocs model that's about it so are, are you going to communicate to the universities or uh, let us represent uh, this one uh, to our uh, other to days. all the universities of the country okay. i have already communicated it to all the vice chancellors of technical universities in different discussion forums a formal letter from iit bombay will go before this month end to all the universities okay. and the similar letter will also go to autonomous institutions now they and their universities can take a call incidentally i told you about the ugc committee i have no reason why professor ved prakash has not been able uh, to insist on his committee the final board sub committee to accept that recommendation and circulate it to all university that committee has recommended very clearly that up to 20% of the credits for any course offered by university can come from these books or blended books model so once that advisory goes although legally such advisory is not required every university including dim university has an autonomy to do that look at iit bombay iit bombay is going to accept this model we are not waiting for any ugc advice my colleagues who have been running blend flip classroom they don't require anything likewise every autonomous institution technically does not require ugc or aict to say anything however in india we don't do something unless it is explicitly permitted by some regulatory body so that problem should be resolved in a short time right. uh, the board of studies accepts <coughs> this model yes and if it says that local examination also has to be conducted along with this because all the university board of studies may not agree for the same will come up with some Those little modifications those universities which do not agree they they will simply not be able to take this course it is not like you accept 
10 percent of this model or 50 percent of this model. Please understand that making modification into EDX platform just to work on this single blended model is proving so difficult. If I have to make 20 different possible functionalities, it is impossible. So that is where the uh, digital representation comes in handy. It is either zero or it is one. So means uh, whatever the grade comes through this uh, blended MOOCs should be accepted by university. That's right. Okay, thank That's you. Right. Yeah. Uh, to make this uh, model work, we need to redefine the syllabus of all the universities that will be taking participation. Yes. Because there must be some significant differences uh, between every uh, subject syllabus. This is one of the reasons why in the United States of America, so many vice chancellors from the US universities, they call them presidents. They have told me FATAC is an excellent model, it, but it will not work in US. Because two neighboring universities having very similar looking syllabus will never accept a syllabus from the other university as a cross. In India, that problem is less because thanks to the AICT observations, generally the syllabi are similar. Secondly, what you say will become a problem if, let us say, 40 subjects taught in mechanical engineering, all 40 subjects have to accept the syllabus from either IIT Bombay or NIT Trichy or some place else. But if I have to accept a syllabus for one or two basic courses, I believe no university will have a problem. Because the basic courses are generally taught similar. Now, if you look at, as uh, you were asking yesterday, the lesson plan, the module, the definitions will never match. As I told you, they don't match even in successive offerings of CS101 in IIT Bombay. But the point is, if the Board of Studies in your Autonomous Institute or University applies their mind in a broader fashion, instead of comparing comma by comma and sequence by sequence and point by point, if they say yes, this syllabus generally covers whatever our students learn and accept it. I think that is doable. So you are very right. Out of 357 universities affiliating 5,000 colleges in the country, I do not expect more than 100 colleges to accept this in the first instance. And these 100 colleges will probably be affiliated to only about 20 to 24 universities. There will be only a few people who will be willing to take the bold step initially. And frankly, I would have a serious problem if 100 universities and 1,000 institutions accept this model. I am not ready to scale up that operation so soon. But once it starts, now look at what could happen. Say, I am a student in Coimbatore. And let us say, some autonomous university or equivalent autonomous college in Salem has accepted this model. All the students from that Salem College are getting IIT Bombay X grades. All the students are learning thermodynamics from Gaitonde. Whereas in my college, I am being taught by my local teachers who are not bad, but they are probably not as good as Gaitonde. Their probably course is not as good as. Will I not next year ask my management why am I being deprived of that course? On the other hand, if the offering to Salem is bodged up, in the first year. Then the Salem people will ask, let us go back to my normal university exam, I don't want this. No, it all depends on how it works. Fine. Actually, uh, my perspective is different. It is a very good idea. Uh, why should not we have uh, uh, keep in mind while designing EDX or remodifying it to self make it self earner? like uh, Facebook, I don't uh, know at this time ki how to achieve it, but in future, if we have popularized, uh, popularized it, so maybe it's possible it will we work as a self-earner to whatever we need, we can uh, earn it. Okay. So, for self-learning? Self-earner. It can earn uh, whatever fund is required, like hitting number of hittings, downloading, uh, those are authorized. Oh, uh, he, he wants to convert the learning teaching uh, pedagogical platform into also a platform which would become an entrepreneurship platform where earning can happen. Yeah. I have not applied my mind to that. But believe me, it will complicate the situation as at present. Yeah. 
if there is some earning then every student will stay instead of paying 500 rupees fees to me yeah. i'll attend this course if you pay me 500 rupees <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's happened but uh, we can uh, no. keep in mind uh, it's a, it's an interesting idea yeah. but i think we will limit ourselves to the uh, changing okay. of the conventional oh, thank you yeah one last question there yes the bombay x is offering computer programming as a basic course so what will be the role of the local teacher and how many local teachers will require to participate uh, two courses as i said will be offering from next year one is thermodynamics and one is computer programming the computer programming course will largely be offered on the lines that you are seeing in this workshop the role of the local teacher will exactly be the same as the local teachers role is for example the coordinator's role is for this 10000 teachers training workshop except that the coordinator's role is limited for duration from 12th may to 21st june is when you work with those uh, uh, 10000 teachers who participate for your students you will be engaged from july till november till the course finishes you will still have to teach every lecture but you will not be giving lecture you will be solving problems but those problems what problems to discuss etc will be given from this edx platform from the moodle that this week's assignments these are the lectures and these are the problems to be discussed in the classroom that means teachers will not be kicked out from the institute uh, oh i see you are worried about the job potential ah uh, it is on the contrary in fact if you ask me i genuinely believe that a teacher will be more empowered in this situation if i am your student today i do not know whether you are an autonomous institution or not but if you are not i am not particularly sensitive to what you suggest i look at the examination pattern and give the examination tomorrow when i know that if i am doing this iit bombay course the 20 marks out of the 100 are going to be given by you on the assignments that you will evaluate that my ability to answer online quizzes of iit bombay depend upon how well i attend your discussion session wouldn't your stature go up in your institution then what it is would you not feel more empowered because you are now free to interact with students and handle them and encourage them spend much more time with them than what you are able to do that that is my feeling how it evolves we do not know but uh, it is nothing like less teachers will be required in fact this was an argument that i had with a google team in the government It's very interesting the google team came with the senior officials of the government and said in 20 years no teachers will be required so we are preparing this this, this platform okay Uh, and the government was amused because i have been trying to convince them that more teachers are required and more empowered teachers are required fortunately the government of india is far more sensible than the google stalwarts they told them that we not only require more teachers but we require better teachers so thank you very much but we will continue our own way so rest assured that it is the other way around and believe me those of us who will participate in this blended mood will soon discover that their actual work will become more it will be focused but it will be more than what normally i work so thank you very much